Welcome to the Meraki Wireless Demo Series, where we highlight features available in our wireless portfolio and show you how you can use them in your own network deployments. In this segment, we'll provide an overview of Meraki Wireless Health and illustrate how you can use it to perform basic troubleshooting tasks, like finding a problematic client device or access point in seconds across your entire Meraki Wireless deployment. Meraki Wireless Health is, at its core, a powerful heuristics engine that rapidly identifies anomalies impacting end users' experience across every stage of client connectivity for rapid root cause analysis and response. Using Wireless Health, you can immediately see whether users are able to successfully access the wireless network, and you can easily identify problematic access points, clients, and stages where connections are failing. Granular details about the reason for failures can be explored to better understand root cause. The overview report summarizes holistic trends, both graphically and in tabular format. By default, the overview report allows you to quickly see the health of your wireless network from an access point's point of view, that is, which APs are experiencing the most connection or latency issues. Drilling down into the overview report's map, lets you quickly see if problematic access points are clustered in a certain geographical region, which may help pinpoint issues like a failing upstream switch or a specific cause of interference. If you've uploaded floor plans into the Meraki dashboard and accurately placed your APs on them, you can select specific maps here to better assess issues by location. You can easily look at holistic trends by client type too. We have an array of different operating systems and device types, which we recognize for you here. If we click on the percent failed connections link or click the connections tab, we arrive at the connections report. Here we can immediately see summary network wide statistics about each stage of connectivity from a client's attempt to associate to an access point to its ability to authenticate to the network to whether or not it receives an IP address, and whether or not it can reach a DNS server to resolve internet domain names. Clicking into any of these stages will bring up the failed connections report, which provides the most granular detail about failures at particular stages for particular clients and access points across specific SSIDs and even VLANs. Each column here is sortable and multiple filters can be applied simultaneously to really drill down and pinpoint root causes of issues. If we move back to the connections report, we can zoom into specific AP deployments on the map to find problematic access points, or we can look at tables below and sort individual columns to better determine which access point or which client or even group of clients is having the most issues on the network within a given time frame. And that time frame can be anywhere from an hour to zooming out to the last week. Finally, the packet latency report shows us which traffic buckets are experiencing the most sluggish performance and on which access points. So right away, you can identify the worst performing APs and actually begin remotely troubleshooting them. So let's take an example scenario. So let's assume we have a user who calls in and is complaining about connectivity issues. Perhaps this user is having trouble actually getting onto the wireless network or accessing a lot of the wireless network resources. One of the first things we might wanna do is actually go into the network that the user is calling from and double check that the network is up and online and getting upstream connectivity from its ISP. Now we are running a full stack of Meraki gear here for this demo network. So we are going to be accessing a Meraki security appliance here. And once you get to the security appliances uh, summary page, you'll get health and connectivity status about that MX. And we can see everything looks good. Uh, we have a green uh, uplink, current uplink status, we can see that um, historically and fairly recently, we do not have any significant 
chunks of downtime or any reboots. We could also go in and check the uplink status just to be doubly sure. We can go in and see that we are getting a public IP address. We can see that our primary WAN uplink is active and that our secondary WAN uplink is sitting by in standby mode and ready to go if there is a failure with our WAN 1 uplink. We can also come down and confirm that we are seeing live traffic, uplink traffic on WAN 1, uh, which you can see here in real time, and that we don't have any real loss or, uh, or real latency issues on our primary WAN uplink. So all looks good. It looks like the network is up. Uh, it's able to pass traffic out to the internet. So the next step is to look at Meraki Wireless Health. And what I'm going to do is maybe zoom out uh, for the last 12 hours. And what we can do is right away see, uh, you know, if we failed connections, things like our average wireless latency for our network in the given time frame. What I want to do is zoom into our connections tab here. And I can see that we do have a significant number of failed connections. Again, for the last 12 hours or so, and some specific devices seem to be having problems. Now, if I look at the problematic connection steps, I'm seeing a flag here for association. Uh, this red, uh, sort of orangish color indicates that this is problematic and, and deserves a little bit more attention. And I can see the failure rates of every other step after that that needs to be taken in order for a client to uh, successfully get to a point where they can pass traffic across a wireless network. Now I could dive into any one of these stages and get a more granular look at which client devices across which access points uh, and wireless networks are having problems with each individual stage. But what I'm going to do, because there was a specific user that was calling in about a specific problem, I'm actually going to go drill down here uh, and look at connections issues by client and see if my client shows up. Now I can sort by total number of failed connections or perhaps the overall percent of failed connections for a given client device. And uh, Ronnie Lott, for example, this client device here, uh, seems problematic as does this Joe Montana laptop. What I could do at this point, if this were my user, um, perhaps Joe Montana uh, was my user who called in, uh, I could click into the failed connections and you'll see that the report now filters just to this client. So I'm seeing all of the issues, again, for a given time frame for a particular client across multiple different failure stages. And what's interesting here is that this particular client seems to be having trouble authenticating. This could result in association failures because if a client mistypes a password or if their login credentials have expired, prompting this authentication error, once they fail to authenticate, that client will be disassociated from the network and that will then result in a subsequent association failure as well. So right away I'm able to perhaps pinpoint a root cause for some of those association failures that we saw earlier. At this point I could go in and make sure that this particular authentication failure was happening on a specific SSID. So I could look at Corp PSK and notice that there's no issues here for this client. It's only on the Corp Radius wireless network. Uh, so, you know, I might want to drill down a little bit more here uh, and maybe even drill into the Joe Montana laptop device uh, and see if uh, there's anything else that might be uh, interesting going on. It looks like there are going to be uh, credentials that are asked for. So my first suggestion to Joe Montana might be to either double check he's typing his password incorrectly or to make sure that his login credentials haven't expired. And right away you can see we have just diagnosed and identified a problematic client device in just a few seconds.